What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and this is my dad, Roly. Happy New Year. <laughs> we are going to be sitting down, uh, drinking an Italian liqueur, uh, and opening up your new Italian watch. An Italian watch. Let's do it. Alright, before we crack open the Amaretto, uh, we'll do a half of a wristwatch check, because I'm the only one wearing a watch. Your watch is still in the box. I'm not wearing one. Right so, now. I'm wearing uh, a Gevril Tribeca. Uh, it's it's a basically a nearly carbon copy of a, a Rolex 6263 pump pusher Paul Newman, uh, acrylic bezel and all. Um, the, <laughs> it's hard. I like two things about these watches. Uh, one, they're quality slash historical accuracy. Mm -hmm. Those are two very important, you know, variables. Uh, and then, you know, further away, although it is definitely a ripoff of the Paul Newman, mm -hmm. these watches were manufactured before Paul Newmans were cool. Ah. You know, these watches were manufactured in the 90s and the Paul Newmans, it started taking off in the 90s, but really didn't become the Paul Newmans well into the 2000s. Uh -huh. So, uh, so I think that this is almost... Um, a pretty, like, insightful, interesting, you know, production uh, at a time, you know, that there was really very little evidence that it would become what it is today. Right. It's so, interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm a big fan. I love wearing it. Good historical perspective. Yeah, exactly. And look at the case. It's yeah, it's a sharp. beautiful watch. Yeah. So, anyway. You know what's cool, though? As much as that watch? That jacket. <laughs> Yeah, look like, at that. like my new uh, 80s tra is it training kit. I right? think so, yeah. Uh, Anna, our editor behind the camera, got me this jacket for uh, for Christmas. Uh, I have wanted one of these jackets for, for so long, and I just never like put in the time to find a really good vintage one, but Anna did. Yeah, it's so, awesome. Uh, now, I, now I feel like the uh, you know the uh, 80s Yankee That's that right. I always knew that I was. Those Yankees. <laughs> Those Yankees. All right, let's pack up from the Amaretto. All right, so we love Amaretto. Um, this is a, a small producer. Usually, usually you see uh, Amaretto di Sarono, yep. right? That's the one that's most widely available. This one here in our house is uh, is uh, Villa. How would you say that? Daquino or da, yeah. Daquino? Da, Daquino. 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 Right. So, um, Thank let's you. Uh, pour a little bit of this. All right. So let's let's first of all take a oh. sip. Salud. Salud. Mm. Tasty. Tasty stuff. Yeah. No, I really do like it. It's so, it's so easy to drink. You know? Okay, so now that we've poured our appropriate uh, Italian liqueur, yes. uh, let's open up your, your new Panerai. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I mean, and the history is just so rich. You know, in 1916 is when it all began, right? Uh, Panerai filed for their, you know, Radiomir patent, which I don't think was the watch itself at the time. I think it was like the radium integration and the radium technology, right? But then it wasn't until 19... 36 or 38, uh, or I think it was 36 um, was the beginning and then 38 was the final production or, 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 the, or the initial, you know, full production um, of the radio mirror. You know, and, and the radio mirror, which we look at as, you know, as this, right? This is very true. It's the, cu it's, it's the cushion, steel case, wire lugs, you know, mechanical hand wound movement with an explorer dial, you know, and, and water resistance, you know, that's the radio mirror. But yet, it's not named after that, right? It's named after the actual luminous material uh, that was on the dial. So it's, it's funny that the one variable, or the, probably the biggest variable that makes the radio mirror, that luminous material, is no longer, right? Obviously, this watch is not using radium. But still, I think it's so freaking impressive that the brand, you know, Panerai, uh, a, a brand kind of famous for, you know, at least for a while, kind of being, you know, shallow and, and being like oversized and, you know, misproportioned uh, and kind of blingy and just like a marketing watch could be so true to a history that it was 90 years ago or 80 years ago, whatever the math is. So yes, I love this watch because it means so much to you and my recollection of your aspirations, but I actually really love the watch itself. All right, so there it is. That's that's the Pam 380 uh, on your wrist. What do you think? I love it. Initial impressions. Uh, first, I thought it was going to be too big for my wrist. 45 millimeters. I never thought I'd wear a 45 millimeter watch. That's huge. It's big, much bigger than I would ever ever consider. But, but I think um, I think that it, it's 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 flat, so uh, it 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 hugs the wrist well. Yeah. It, despite the fact that I don't have big wrists. Right. Uh, and it, these lugs, these wire lugs. Exactly right. Uh, make this watch uh, seem a lot smaller. Yep. I mean, if you, if you think about it, right, like 
so, so when you when you talk about watch size, right, you, your biggest reference point most people go to is just case size. 45, 38, 39. Um, but particularly in vintage, but on the other end, when I'm always trying to tell people that that 34 millimeter watch wears larger than it is, uh, most one of the big variables that I'm talking about um, is the lug to lug width, mm -hmm. right? Is from from the from the you know, bottom you know, from the lowest point of the lowest lug, you know, of, of the bottom to the top to the top. That's how much actual wrist presence it has, right? So although this watch is 45, you're missing basically all the lug. The yeah. watch ends when the case ends. Yes, it does. That's it. And that's what makes you know, the difference. If exactly. this protruded out, it, I wouldn't be able to wear that. Your GMT is a 40 millimeter watch, right. but I'd be interested in finding, before we release this, let's put the number uh, lug to lug on the watch. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it's not that far off right. from 45, if right. not possibly, maybe even maybe even larger. Maybe. So that that's what we're missing here. That's the big like, oh, now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, so so you like the watch? I, I love it. I love the simplicity of it. I've I've liked this watch for many 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 years. Talk as you know, uh, one of the first watches, even when you were very small, I would talk about this uh, you know, Italian military watch Panerai. And uh, again, I'm not I'm not a, a watch uh, geek by any by any stretch of the imagination. For me, you know, aesthetics uh, always yeah. has meant a lot. Yeah. And um, and uh, we went to Torno uh, one time, yep. right, many years ago, yep. and we sat down at the at the at the at the Panerai section, and we, yep. we tried on these watches, and um, uh, it was it was wonderful. I said, yeah, someday I'll ha I'll have uh, you know I'll have one of these. Yep. So uh, here I am, fortunate enough to now have one, and uh, it is it, it's beautiful. So really, this brand for for a couple of reasons kind of fits into your personal like uh, uh, my, my trinity, your my trinity, trinity. yeah. So to, what is that? Talk to me about well, it. Well, um, Rolex. GMT, which you have. GMT. You always wanted one since you were a kid. And I'm very blessed that I have a gold uh, Datejust as well. You have two Rolexes. And um, the the Cartier uh, tank, uh, the, 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 With the that rectangular. With that stepped case. Stepped case that uh, that mom uh, gave you guys a Christmas gift. Uh, again, very blessed for that. Yeah. And now and now this one uh, that, um, that I, in fact, I got because uh, Poppy... Oh, he always gives us nice Christmas <laughs> gifts, and it's one. It's incredible what I end up getting <laughs> with that one it's gift. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inside joke in our family. I don't want to get too far into it. Anytime my dad like you know spends a large amount of money, my, my mom will always say, uh, uh, "Where did that come from?" And he goes, "Could you believe Poppy gave it to me?" <laughs> she goes, "Well, he gave me a hundred dollars. What did he give you?" <laughs> oh, Poppy, we love Poppy. Um, so yeah, these are the three brands. That uh, I've always admired. Yep. Um, and, and again, you know, it, it, it would seem that I that I am very much in the watch culture. Yeah, of, you but, say you're not a watch, but, geek, but I guess I am. I think, got, like, I think I, I'm a mild enthusiast. Right? You got some serious yeah. pieces. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You it, know, it, 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 I don't know how I've gotten there, but I think it always has always you know it goes back to uh, my fascination of watches because as a very very little kid watching my father, my father loved watches. Yeah, or loves yeah. watches. And, um, and and just seeing him play around with yeah. an Omega, you know, things like that. And that just stuck with me, and I developed my own taste. Right. So. And what's funny is I think that my fascination with watches is, is for many reasons. But one of the big reasons is uh, because growing up, you and I were so close. And so and you were always so open about, like, your, like your aspirations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that was, like... You know, I remember sitting on your lap when I was, what, like seven years old, you were doing expense reports. Yes. You know, talking about, you know, like money and talking about like serious things. So uh, goes going hand in hand with that, you know, the things that mean something as far as your achievement were always a topic of conversation. So when you got a Rolex, that was huge. Yes. You know, for, for me, like yes. I watched it. That was a sick moment. Um, when you got, well, you got your Panerai very recently, but, you know, I remember, like, I remember you wanting a Panerai, we did the math, 10 years ago. I was 12. And, and I know that if I was 12, the conversation started way earlier because that's just like my first like very specific large memory of it. Yeah, I, I, again, uh, I think you hit it right on the head. Um, it, it was, it's been a long time coming. I, uh, I never thought I'd, I'd actually even have one, believe I, it or not. I kind of, yeah. So the fact that, that, uh, that, we ended up with an opportunity to 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 purchase this watch uh, was a phenomenal, if in fact maybe even unexpected event. Right. And uh, but the fact that we have it now and we can share it and, and use yep, it, you know, for, sure. for many years, uh, to me is is uh, is just a phenomenal phenomenal feeling. And, yep. and I really I can't wait. 
uh, as I mentioned to you, to be able to play around with different straps to see how this watch it'll 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 speak in different languages, oh, if you will. It's gonna it, yeah. You're right. It's gonna be so much fun. My understanding when you when you told me you wanted the watch, right? Mm -hmm. um, I always thought you wanted a Luminor, right? The one with the with the with the crown. And I love that watch too. I I love it too. I prefer the mm -hmm. the, the Radiomir. Yeah. Uh, I just do. Yeah. You know, and 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 to me, what's so interesting about it? I mean. I, I guess you're saying that you, you, it was all driven from aesthetics, and I do believe you completely. But when I was young, like, like when, I, when I guess when I, when I was a kid, I was you know uh, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, or whatever it was. I do remember you know you knowing mm -hmm. a, a, a decent portion of the history of the brand. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I remember it being yeah. you know, a, 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 a slightly even almost pre World War II Italian yeah. Navy watch. You know, right. and I guess you know being an Italian kid from Jersey, I was like, ah, oh, it's super cool. You know, like that was you know that was just a really cool thing. Um, even at a time in which I might not have been able to pick out a Panerai in a group of watches when I was ten, I knew that those Italian soldiers, like historically. They wore Panerai. That's right. You know? And we even did a little bit of research, right? And, what, and where, when did Panerai become Panerai? And uh, yeah, they've got a funny history, right? I mean, I, I don't know all of it, but I, I do know, uh, and we were looking up in the process of yeah. buying the watch, the process of buying the radio mirror. Uh, the radio started in 1919, I think. Mm. That's a, that's a long time ago. You know, for a brand that had a renaissance much, much later, I yes. think that a lot of people give it, like, credit to Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. Right? right. Like, people yeah. say, yeah, I think, that's, I, I think that yeah. might not even be, you know, uh, you know true. Right. Um, this repopularization of the brand happened much, much later. And almost, you know, I hate to say it's, like, irrelevant to the, the history, um, but it, it almost mirrors, like, the reverso. You know, how the reverso was nothing for so many years, and then it came back. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was an icon, nothing icon again. Um, r rich people brought Panerai back, right. not not sports, not not you know, not Marines. <laughs> you know, it's the truth. Right, right. You know, when it became the watch to own, that that's when you fell in love with it. Right. You know, not necessarily because it was the watch, but because you now knew about it. You know. Yeah. So in retrospect, I I've known about Panerai since I'm a little kid. Yes. Because of you. Yes. You know, and I remember how much you fawned over over the brand. I loved it. I, again, for me, there was a certain aesthetic to that watch uh, that that I just found uh, alluring and appealing. Yeah. And um, just the the size of the numerals. Yeah. Um, you know, I love it now because I don't actually don't have to wear my readers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to tell time. So um, yeah, it's it's beautiful. It, it wears wonderfully, and uh, you know, I hope to wear it for a long, long time. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. Now, the one the one big variable here, the one thing that we have we haven't talked about. Uh, is, is straps. You know, Panerai's yes. are one of the watches that are probably most famous for being, you know, versatile and, and a lot of strap makers have taken on the, you know, the, okay, Panerai, you know, lifestyle uh, in manufacturing. So you have it on a black, you know, OEM yes. Panerai strap. It looks nice. I like it. But I think we need to play around. I think you need, I think you need browns. I think you could even do with a red or, or a blue or a gray. I'm not even sure. Mm -hmm. But I think you'd have a ton of fun with other colors. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to open up the space, open up Liquor Run in a future episode, maybe two or three weeks mm -hmm. from now, to bring in straps from different manufacturers from possibly all over the world, maybe four or five different manufacturers, uh, uh, get the straps on the watch, do some you know reviews, do some talking points about them, uh, and, and really give our audience a feel uh, for the the, the 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 strap manufacturers and the brands themselves absolutely and, and their story and, and how they marry with and how watch. they're marrying with your watch yeah show you know? show some creativity I think it's gonna be a lot of fun that's maybe, a great maybe idea we'll do, maybe we'll do four uh, three to five straps uh, I'm stoked I want to go really really in depth you know panel straps are something that are really really popular on Instagram mm -hmm. everyone sees them everyone talks about them but on YouTube I was doing some research and it's it's kind of poor and frankly I think you don't really get an idea for how how beautiful something is until you're really getting it in live action getting it in video so uh, so I'm excited to uh, to do this it'll be a fun journey what are you thinking color wise oh man I love uh, the saddle color uh, to me uh, it is beautiful yeah but I, I you almost know, like an unsaturated a little less saturated you know exactly, natural yeah, leathers natural that'll just patina over time yeah uh, reds you like know, Mr. Wonderful Mr. from uh, Shark Tank. Shark Tank. Yeah, even even green. Off. You know, I mean, there's so much, so many there's ways so many to ways go. Do it. Uh, so it, yeah, it should be it should be a lot of fun to, uh, to play around. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Liquor Run. Uh, pick up a bottle of Amaretto, even Di Sorono, if you know if you want to go that way. But um, it's a fun little drink. It's a great uh, it's a great liqueur. Yeah. It's uh, very low in alcohol. Yeah. It's a lovely way to to uh, to cap a day. Salud, guys. Salud.